of 2 Chronicles. Solomon, son of David, established himself firmly over his kingdom, for the Lord his God was with him and made him exceedingly great. Then Solomon spoke to all Israel, to the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds, to the judges and to all the leaders in Israel, the heads of families. And Solomon and the whole assembly went to the high place at Gibeon. For God's tent of meeting was there, which Moses, the Lord's servant, had made in the wilderness. Now David had brought up the ark of God from kiriath Jeorim to the place he had prepared for it, because he had pitched a tent for it in Jerusalem. But the bronze altar that Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Hur, had made was in Gibeon, in front of the tabernacle of the Lord. So Solomon and the assembly inquired of him there. Solomon went up to the bronze altar before the Lord in the tent of meeting and offered a thousand burnt offerings on it. That night, God appeared to Solomon and said to him, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered God, You have shown great kindness to David, my father, and have made me king in his place. Now, Lord God, let your promise to my father David be confirmed. For you have made me king over a people who are as numerous as the dust of the earth. Give me wisdom and knowledge that I may lead this people. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? God said to Solomon, Since this is your heart's desire, and you have not asked for wealth, possessions or honor, nor for the death of your enemies. And since you have not asked for a long life, but for wisdom and knowledge to govern my people over whom I have made you king, therefore wisdom and knowledge will be given you. And I will also give you wealth, possessions and honor, such as no king who was before you ever had and none after you will have. Then Solomon went to Jerusalem from the high place at Gibeon, from before the tent of meeting, and he reigned over Israel. Solomon accumulated chariots and horses. He had 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horses, which he kept in the chariot cities and also with him in Jerusalem. The king made silver and gold as common in Jerusalem as stones, and cedar as plentiful as sycamore fig trees in the foothills. Solomon's horses were imported from Egypt and from Kiwi. The royal merchants purchased them from Kiwi at the current price. They imported a chariot from Egypt for 600 shekels of silver and a horse for 150. They also exported them to all the kings of the Hittites and of the Arameans. Solomon gave orders to build a temple for the name of the Lord and a royal palace for himself. He conscripted 70,000 men as carriers and 80,000 as stone cutters in the hills and 3,600 as supervisors over them. Solomon sent this message to Hiram, king of Tyre. Send me cedar logs as you did for my father David when you sent him cedar to build a palace to live in. Now I'm about to build a temple for the name of the Lord my God and to dedicate it to him for burning fragrant incense before him, for setting out the consecrated bread regularly, and for making burnt offerings every morning and evening, and on the Sabbaths, at the new moons, and at the appointed festivals of the Lord our God. This is a lasting ordinance for Israel. The temple I'm going to build will be great because our God is greater than all other gods. But who is able to build a temple for him since the heavens, even the highest heavens cannot contain him? Who then am I to build a temple for him, except as a place to burn sacrifices before him? Send me therefore a man skilled to work in gold and silver, bronze and iron, and in purple, crimson, and blue yarn, an experience in the art of engraving to work in Judah and Jerusalem with my skilled workers whom my father David provided. 
Send me also cedar, juniper, and algum logs from Lebanon, for I know that your servants are skilled in cutting timber there. My men will work with yours to provide me with plenty of lumber, because the temple I build must be large and magnificent. I will give your servants, those who cut the timber, 20,000 cores of ground wheat, 20,000 cores of barley, 20,000 baths of wine, and 20,000 baths of olive oil. Hiram, king of Tyre, replied by letter to Solomon. Because the Lord loves his people, he has made you their king. And Hiram added, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, who made heaven and earth. He has given King David a wise son, endowed with intelligence and discernment, who will build a temple for the Lord and a palace for himself. I am sending you Haram Abai, a man of great skill, whose mother was from Dan and whose father was from Tyre. He is trained to work in gold and silk, bronze and iron, stone and wood, and with purple and blue and crimson yarn and fine linen. He is experienced in all kinds of engravings and can execute any design given to him. He will work with your skilled workers and with those of my Lord David your father. Now let my Lord send his servants the wheat and barley and the olive oil and wine he promised, and we will cut all the logs from Lebanon that you need and will float them as rafts by sea down to Joppa. You can then take them up to Jerusalem. Solomon took a census of all the foreigners residing in Israel after the census his father David had taken and they were found to be 153,600. He assigned 70,000 of them to be carriers and 80,000 to be stone cutters in the hills with 3,600 supervisors over them to keep the people working. Then Solomon began to build the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem on Mount Moriah where the Lord had appeared to his father David. It was on the threshing floor of Arana, the Jebusite, the place provided by David. He began building on the second day of the second month in the fourth year of his reign. The foundation Solomon laid for building the temple of God was 60 cubits long and 20 cubits wide, using the cubit of the old standard. The portico at the front of the temple was 20 cubits long across the width of the building and 20 cubits high. He overlaid the inside with pure gold. He paneled the main hall with juniper and covered it with fine gold and decorated it with palm tree and chain designs. He adorned the temple with precious stones and the gold he used was gold of Parvea. He overlaid the ceiling beams, door frames, walls and doors of the temple with gold and he carved cherubim on the walls. He built the most holy place, its length corresponding to the width of the temple, 20 cubits long and 20 cubits wide. He overlaid the inside with 600 talents of fine gold. The gold nails weighed 50 shekels. He also overlaid the upper parts with gold. For the most holy place, he made a pair of sculptured cherubim and overlaid them with gold. The total wingspan of the cherubim was 20 cubits. One wing of the first cherub was five cubits long and touched the temple wall, while its other wing, also five cubits long, touched the wing of the other cherub. Similarly, one wing of the second cherub was five cubits long and touched the other temple wall, and its other wing, also five cubits long, touched the wing of the first cherub. The wings of these cherubim extended 20 cubits. They stood on their feet, facing the main hall. He made the curtain of blue, purple, and crimson yarn and fine linen, with cherubim worked into it. For the front of the temple, he made two pillars, which totaled 35 cubits in length, each with a capital five cubits high. He made interwoven chains and put them on top of the pillars. He also made a hundred pomegranates and attached them to the chains. He erected the pillars in front of the temple, one to the south and one to the north. The one to the south he named Jachin, 
and the one to the north, Boaz. He made a bronze altar 20 cubits long, 20 cubits wide, and 10 cubits high. He made the sea of cast metal, circular in shape, measuring 10 cubits from rim to rim and five cubits high. It took a line of 30 cubits to measure around it. Below the rim, figures of bulls encircled it, 10 to a cubit. The bulls were cast in two rows in one piece with the sea. The sea stood on 12 bulls, three facing north, three facing west, three facing south, and three facing east. The sea rested on top of them, and their hindquarters were toward the center. It was a handbreadth in thickness, and its rim was like the rim of a cup, like a lily blossom. It held 3,000 baths. He then made 10 basins for washing, and placed five on the south side and five on the north. In them, the things to be used for the burnt offerings were rinsed, but the sea was to be used by the priests for washing. He made 10 gold lampstands according to the specifications for them and placed them in the temple, five on the south side and five on the north. He made 10 tables and placed them in the temple, five on the south side and five on the north. He also made a 100 gold sprinkling bowls. He made the courtyard of the priests and the large court and the doors for the court and overlaid the doors with bronze. He placed the sea on the south side, at the southeast corner, and Huram also made the pots and shovels and sprinkling bowls. So Huram finished the work he had undertaken for King Solomon in the temple of God. The two pillars, the two bowl-shaped capitals on top of the pillars, the two sets of network decorating the two bowl-shaped capitals on top of the pillars, the 400 pomegranates for the two sets of network, Two rows of pomegranates for each network, decorating the bowl-shaped capitals on top of the pillars, the stands with their basins, the sea and the twelve bulls under it, the pots, shovels, meat forks, and all related articles. All the objects that Huramabai made for King Solomon for the Temple of the Lord were of polished bronze. The king had them cast in clay molds in the plain of the Jordan between Succoth and Zarathan. All these things that Solomon made amounted to so much that the weight of the bronze could not be calculated. Solomon also made all the furnishings that were in God's temple. The golden altar, the tables on which was the bread of the presence, the lampstands of pure gold with their lamps to burn in front of the inner sanctuary as prescribed. The gold floral work and lamps and tongs, they were solid gold the pure gold wick trimmers, sprinkling bowls, dishes and censers, and the gold doors of the temple, the inner doors to the most holy place, and the doors of the main hall. When all the work Solomon had done for the temple of the Lord was finished, he brought in the things his father David had dedicated, the silver and gold and all the furnishings, and he placed them in the treasuries of God's temple. Then Solomon summoned to Jerusalem the elders of Israel, all the heads of the tribes and the chiefs of the Israelite families, to bring up the Ark of the Lord's Covenant from Zion, the city of David. And all the Israelites came together to the king at the time of the festival in the seventh month. When all the elders of Israel had arrived, the Levites took up the Ark, and they brought up the Ark and the tent of meeting and all the sacred furnishings in it. The Levitical priest carried them up, and King Solomon and the entire assembly of Israel that had gathered about him were before the ark, sacrificing so many sheep and cattle that they could not be recorded or counted. The priests then brought the ark of the Lord's covenant to its place in the inner sanctuary of the temple, the most holy place and put it beneath the wings of the cherubim. The cherubim spread their wings over the place of the ark and covered the ark and its carrying poles. These poles were so long that their ends, extending from the ark, could be seen from in front of the inner sanctuary, but not from outside the holy place, 
and they are still there today. There was nothing in the ark except the two tablets that Moses had placed in it at Horeb, where the Lord made a covenant with the Israelites after they came out of Egypt. The priests then withdrew from the holy place. All the priests who were there had consecrated themselves, regardless of their divisions. All the Levites who were musicians, Asaph, Heman, Jeduthun, and their sons and relatives stood on the east side of the altar, dressed in fine linen and playing cymbals, harps, and lyres. They were accompanied by 120 priests sounding trumpets. The trumpeters and musicians joined in unison to give praise and thanks to the Lord. Accompanied by trumpets, cymbals, and other instruments, the singers raised their voices in praise to the Lord and sang. He is good, his love endures forever. Then the temple of the Lord was filled with the cloud and the priests could not perform their service because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the temple of God. 